What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back to your favorite. I got a story time for y'all about my famous boss. So grab your wine, snacks, everything you need. Before we get into this story time, I want to give a special shout out to today's partner of this video, Care Of. I have used Care Of for about two years now and I've never been more on top of my vitamin game and I just want to share my knowledge and wisdom with you because I think you would find it beneficial as well as extremely convenient. Care Of brings personalization beautifully to vitamin supplements and wellness products. If you don't know where to start and you don't know where to go in the grocery store to find vitamins and supplements that will work for you, Care Of is the perfect place to start. All you have to do is take their quick five minute quiz. This quiz asks you a variety of different questions about your lifestyle, your goals, and they curate a personalized vitamin pack that's specific to you and your needs and your goals based on the answers of this quiz. It is super fast, it is very quick, very user friendly, and they have recommendations. Not only do they have recommendations, but they also go into depth about why, what it is. I have learned so much about vitamins and supplements that I didn't know about before and have genuinely made a difference in my everyday life. Growing up, I always had that one size fits all multivitamin, but you know, as you get older, your needs change and I just feel like a personalized vitamin pack is exactly what I needed. Because you know, we get older and we get like crickety crackety and we might need a little bit of a vitamin and supplemental help, okay? You don't have to worry about running out of your vitamins and having to run to the store. That is where I would typically fall off and I would forget. Also, they come in a really cool dispenser, you guys, that you can put near your coffee maker, your toothbrush, anywhere that's convenient. It's very slim and slender. It's just really convenient in all aspects. And just look at these, look at these. They even have really cute motivational quotes on the front of it to start your morning off right. These are also amazingly perfect for travel. Just pop them into your bag, pop them into your purse. You're not bringing bottles and bottles. It's all in one pack, very convenient and personalized to you. So if you guys are looking for supplements and vitamins and maybe you wanna just like explore the different options, definitely check out Care Of. You can visit their website at careof.com or you can use the scan code real quick like with your phone and take the quick five minute quiz, see what they recommend to you. And if you're interested in trying them out, you already know I got a discount code for you. All you have to do is use a Nikki Fall at checkout and you will get 50% off of your first order with Care Of just to try it out, just to check it out. And I really wish you guys the best of luck on your future goals and especially with health and wellness, treat your body right and your body will treat you right. Girl, we only get one of them. So if you're curious, you wanna try them out, now would be a great time. Definitely use this QR code. Use my code for 50% off, girl. Your first order with Care Of, I think you guys will really enjoy them, find them beneficial and convenient. If you guys have any questions, let me know and let me know if you try them out, let me know what you think, but I've never been more on top of my vitamin game ever in my life. So thank you so much to my homies at Care Of for partnering with me on this story time. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Now y'all know I hopped around from job to job, okay? Those of you guys that are here have been here for a good minute. I do not need to go into the backstory. If you have any questions, ask in the comments and your fellow Glamazons will catch you up. But y'all know I used to hop around from job to job right and I never had any issues with my bosses okay like my bosses were typically pretty cool and even if they weren't that cool like we were cordial I had actually recently got laid off and I was really upset about it because when when I got laid off I really enjoyed my job um, but we all got laid off and it was terrible and I was without a job and here I go but the good thing about it is is that like the job that I got laid off from I had network there were some people there that I knew that were higher-ups and I was able to through a friend of a friend get a recommendation for a role with another company. So like I was getting like firsthand recommended. So like through word of mouth girl, which is very powerful. So I was able to get an interview pretty quickly after being laid off. And it was at, you know, it was at a pretty well-known company, pretty big. Like they were all across the United States. Honestly, I know for real, for real, I would have never gotten this opportunity had it not been for my friend. So if you ever see this, thank you. But I need to let you know how things turned out. So I get a call from a really nice HR director, manager, whatever you want to call her, okay? And uh, she was like, hey, I got word from so-and-so. He's a really good friend of mine. He said that you would be a perfect fit for an admin position that we have available. Would you like to come in for an interview? And I was like, of course, amazing, perfect. So fast forward, I do my use. I get my little cute business outfit together, my interview outfit. I get my hard copy resumes. Y'all know what's up. So I go in there and like the front portion 
portion of the office was completely empty and I'm like, hello. And this lady comes out of an office that's like literally right there. And she was like, oh my God, hi, I didn't even know you were here. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like there was no like bell or anything. So like she was coming out, it looked like she was trying to get more coffee. And she was like, okay, I will be with you in just a moment. I'm so sorry. And I was like, oh, it's fine. So she goes into the break room or whatever. And I'm just sitting there and I take this moment to look around. I always had a rule. My mom was really big on this because my mom used to work in HR. And I don't know if it's the same now, but I've just always done this. I would not be on my phone while I was waiting for my interview when I'm like in the waiting room. I was always like looking at a magazine, a piece of literature, or like just like looking around and being interested at the, you know, trying to observe, you know what I mean? I guess it was like a telltale sign of being detail oriented. I don't know, anyways, girl. So I made it a point to not be on my phone. So I'm just sitting there like, you know, just trying to find something to look at so I'm not just all awkward, right? So you know, they have like the awards and stuff like that. And then I start seeing some articles, some newspaper articles. So I stand up, there's one guy that's in all of these photos and all of these articles. And he's like dressed in like he's a vet. He was in the military, he's shaking hands. And then I recognized one of the faces and it was the mayor at the time. Like he had met the mayor, like this man was obviously a huge deal. So I was like, oh my God. So I'm sitting there trying to, I don't know, like get a synopsis of who this person is. Lady came back out and she was like, okay, thank you so much for waiting. You know, you can come in here. So I follow her into her office and I have my interview. Everything goes really well. She's a really sweet person. And it turns out that she was working out of this office remotely. She was headquartered somewhere else, but she was, she would hire and do all the hiring for all the different locations around the metro area. So I always learned that in interviews, you know, you are not the only person that should be answering questions. You need to have questions for them too, right? So a lot of my questions are always about the dynamic and the environment and the office. And I found it a little, it was a little weird that everything that she was saying in regards to this office was like, oh yeah, you know, it's typically, um, yeah, I think it's a pretty chill, like, overall, like a very general, very vague, idea of the dynamic of, the, of this office. And as we get into this conversation, that's when she tells me she works remotely. She does not work out of this office, but she does all of the hiring and firing for all of the offices around the Denver Metro area. But, but don't be alarmed because I've known all these guys for years and years and years. Although I don't know the everyday, you know, dynamic here, I know all of them pretty well, so you're in good hands. Like you're gonna, it's gonna be great. The pay was pretty good. The benefits were even better. And this was gonna be the first time that I had full benefits and I was pretty young. And so, and it was like good insurance, girl. It was good insurance. I left that interview knowing, girl, that I had that job in the bag. I, and I think that honestly, it wasn't just about like my interview skill. It was because of the word of mouth referral that I got. Like that was the strongest point I knew that I had it. Fast forward, the following Monday, I am sitting at my desk at my new job looking crow, okay? At this point, I only met with the HR director, manager, whatever you wanna call her, okay? She's the only person that I met with. She hired me and now I'm here. Now, she's not here though. She is not here. I legitimately have not formally met any other team member in this office, which is very odd. Okay, no big deal. Like, I'm just gonna take my place and I guess just wait, I don't know. So I get up, I go make me some coffee and like people are coming in and out cause like the copier was in there. Like they weren't saying anything to me. They were just like coming in, grabbing paper and like just like giving me a look like, okay. And then like leaving. And this was, this happened like three, four different times. And I was like, hey, okay, hi, bye. Okay, hi, bye. And just, you know, I didn't know what to do. So girl, I get through like half of my day. It's almost lunchtime and not one person has said anything to me. Have I gotten side eyes? Yes. Have I gotten confused looks as people are coming into the office? Yes. But like, was anybody stopping? No. Like it was just so, it was like the weirdest first day I had ever had. There were two executives uh, that were based out of this office. So I was like, okay, well, if there's anybody that I need to ask something to, I would guess that it would be like a higher up because I don't know who my direct manager is. Girl, I, I knew nothing. And I, I'm starving and I tried to like wait it out and nobody's talking to me. So there I go and I go down to the very end of the hall because each of them had corner offices. So I just picked one 
and I go and I knock on his door. My heart's beating off fast. Like I've never formally met this man. And um, he tells me to come in and he is the nicest man. He is the nicest man. And he comes around and his name, we're going to name him Stuart. Okay. And he comes around his desk and he gives me a handshake. He was like, hi, I'm Stuart. He was like, how's your first day? So clearly he knew like who I was. If you have any questions, let me know. And I was like, yeah, actually, I was like, um, I just wanted to know like when it was okay for me to take lunch. And he goes, oh my God. He was like, I'm so sorry. Everything has just been very hectic. We had a lot of meetings today and he just starts apologizing. He was like, you know how Mondays can be. And I was like, no, for sure, for sure. So um, he was like, yes, go, go to lunch. It's fine. You know, we'll see you in an hour. And I was like, okay, cool. And the hour goes up and I come inside. When I come inside, there are two men that are standing by my desk and one of them is Stuart. And the other one is like super tall, like literally girl, they were like this and this. Like, hi Nikki, how's your lunch? And I was like, well, you know, it's great, it was wonderful. You haven't gotten to meet formally and he's like, you know, going like this to the other guy that's standing next to him and they're about the same age. And I was like, oh yeah. And like at this point in time, girl, that I recognized him and I had recognized him from the articles on the wall. And I was like, immediately and I was like oh snap this is him right Daniel we're gonna call him Daniel okay so Daniel and Stuart and they were the execs of this location so he sticks out his hand and he's like hi I'm Daniel nice to meet you and I was like nice to meet you too and he had like kind of like a very stern demeanor to him um he just kind of like if a person could be a color he was like gray honestly like that's I don't know how else to explain that. I don't know. So they were like polar opposites. Stuart was like very high energy, very nice, very bubbly personality, would talk to anybody. But Daniel was very stoic and just his demeanor was very, I don't know, like nonchalant about everything. So they end up taking me to Daniel's office, which was on the other side. He had the other corner office. So we go in there and they sit me down at this round desk and they start, it was essentially like another interview girl. I was like, why did I even interview with the HR lady? If y'all gonna just do it all over again. So there I go talking about my past jobs, my experience, da da da. Do I know how to multitask and what do I pride myself in? And what would I say is my biggest weaknesses? All that, it was an interview. And I was like, okay. So I'm over here trying to like make sure that they both you know, are getting some sort of, you know, acknowledgement from me. And every time I look over at Daniel, I became very self-conscious for the first time in a while. And I was like, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Like he just, I don't know. He just was so okay. Fast forward, we have this meeting, everything's all good. It ends well. And you know, I go back to work. I had like a few training videos to get through and stuff. First day under my belt, cool. I would say like the first week or two was pretty, you know, calm and I got a lot of training done and I got a, I started getting my feet wet and like the database and you know, all of the logistics and, and data entry and all of that and trying to figure out the filing system. You know, as I started getting to know my coworkers, I don't know, like I had this, terrible habit of like wanting to win over my co-workers approval number one because I was new but number two is because I was very young and no matter what it didn't matter how much experience I had under my belt at this point more oftentimes than not people would take one look at me and just doubt me immediately and just look at me as a joke so I would overcompensate and I would I would hear like one of my co-workers complaining about like not having enough time to finish a b and c and I would be the one to be like, oh my God, I, I can help you with that. That's not a problem. Like I know how to do that or I'm familiar with the software. Like, let me do it. I can do it. And so I was like taking on projects, you know, anytime I had, you know, open time with the intention of like making them my friends. Well, girl, it backfired on my ass so fast because I start getting like piles of paperwork on my desk. I would come into work and have stuff already on my desk with like little post-its from my coworkers. Oh, hey, like, can you get this done? Like, I'm really appreciate it and then I would open up my computer and check my emails and I have like requests for big old printing jobs and can you bind them and can you have it on my desk by lunch please I would like love you forever like they would offer me like Starbucks and stuff like that but it was a lot of work and before I knew it girl I was busy I was running around all the time and this just kind of became the norm and I made the mistake of allowing my coworkers to see that I had the ability to multitask your girl can multitask okay and I can run the world when I really 
want to. Don't do that. I would say don't do that. Um, stick to your job description because guess what? Guess what? My pay didn't go up. My pay did not increase. Uh, just a word from the wise, okay? Just stick within the confines of your job description, girl, because it got crazy. So crazy, in fact, that one day, I'm like in the midst of all of this and I was so into it that I couldn't even, I didn't even know that somebody was standing behind me. What are you working on? Now turn around and it's Daniel. So I tell him what I'm working on and he was like looking down at my desk and he was like, why are you working on that? And his tone was so like, oh my God, like am I gonna go to the principal's office? Like am I in trouble? Like he straight up was just like, why are you working on that? So I start babbling and I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, wherever I can help. And sometimes, you know, they might, they need a little extra help. And I'm talking girl and I look up and his face is like, he is so pissed. He is so pissed, that's all I can say. Immediately go into apology mode and I was like, I'm, I'm sorry if, if like I'm, I wasn't supposed to do this. And he was like, no, it's not about you. It's about them, like they know better. Stop it, just like put it over there. And I was like, okay. And I like push whatever I had, like the folder, you know, away from me. Like I didn't know what to do. So I was like, okay, sit here. I will be right back. And like this man was so bossy and I was like, okay. So girl, he just takes off. And he legitimately tells me, do not do anything. Just hold still, I'll be right back. I didn't know what to do, so I get up and I try to, I go refill my coffee. And like, I'm trying to like get an idea of what's going on. And he was gone for like, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes. And I was like, oh my God, like, am I, am I gonna get fired? Like, what is happening? Daniel and three of my coworkers come stand around my desk. And he stands there and he starts grabbing things and he was like, you, you can take this and you can finish that. You, how about you take this and stop giving it to Nikki? And like, girl, he gave them all, he gave them all back their stuff, all of it. They're all of their stuff. And he was like talking to the other one and he was like, and you, what did you ask her to do? And he was like, oh, I asked her to do a print job. And he like straight up looked at me. He was like, Nikki, delete the email. He was like, you can do the print job. You guys, he starts chewing them out. You hear me in front of me talking about they don't manage their time well. Nikki was not hired as your assistant. You've been here all of two months. You think that you deserve an assistant? Like girl, when I tell you, like I was blushing out of embarrassment for them. Like the way that he was coming at them. Like at first I was like, oh, like he just doesn't want them to overwork me. Girl, it like went past that pretty fast. It, to the point where I was like, oh my God, like give them some mercy because he was, and the bass in his voice, I was like, all of us were scared, all of us. You could hear the military background in this man. The way he was talking to them, it was like a sergeant, like for real. Girl, they get chewed out, they take off all their stuff. He has me open up my email and watches me. You hear me with all of the requests for print jobs or anything outside of what I'm supposed to be doing. He, he wanted to see that I deleted those emails and like was not gonna do that, okay? He walks away. There was no other conversation like, hey, this is what I want you to do instead. Nothing. He was just like, okay, bye. Okay, so awkward. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be real. Like, my coworkers, I don't know if they thought that I snitched on them or something, but like, they didn't talk to me for a while. Like, they were just being awkward because like, I, or they could have just been embarrassed because they got chewed out in front of me. Like, it was crazy, right? So fast forward, Daniel came to my desk and I swear this man was light on his feet. He would just like show up out of nowhere and like scare the shit out of me. So one day he comes to me and he just like asked me a very simple question. He was like, hey, do you know how to use so-and-so? And he was like talking about a specific software and I had not been trained on that yet. I was scared to even answer, but I had to tell him. And I was like, um, I haven't been trained on that quite yet. And he was like, oh, you guys just visibly, visibly deflated, visibly upset. And he's like, oh my God, just takes off, goes back to his office, shuts the door. And I was like, oh my God, I'm just sucking at my job so much. Like nobody likes me. I am just screwing this up so bad. The HR lady, she came back to the office one day and she, you know, checked in with me and she had me come into that office that she was in. And she was like, Nikki, you know, come here, come tell me how things have been going. You know, how have you been fitting in? How have you been liking the position? And so, you know, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, yeah, it's been great. It's been wonderful. It's been amazing. So I'm like trying to like hold it together. And all of a sudden she goes, well, you know, I'm only asking cause <laughs> I know how Daniel can be. He doesn't mean to be, he means well. He gets a lot of work done. He's a workaholic, but you know, he just, sometimes he can be a bit much. And I was like, uh, you think? And this was the point that I got 
more information about Daniel's background and why he was on like these articles that were in the front lobby and stuff. And it turns out that he was a decorated war veteran. He had gotten injured while deployed he was like a hero and a lot of people looked up to him he had saved many lives not only did he do that when he returned home he started with his college studies and he graduated top of his class with his degree while he was finishing his degree he started his career with this company and like excelled and so by the time he graduated top of his class in college he already had a pretty substantial role in this company she was like so you know he's definitely very inspired inspirational you know such a touching story she goes but you know he does suffer from PTSD a lot with you know what he's seen and been through you know while he was deployed and everything and I was like oh okay and so you know it started kind of making sense and she was like you know so if you hear him you know he means well but sometimes he just gets overwhelmed and things like that the way that she was talking to me she was giving me like warnings like hey like she knew that something was gonna happen or something but she was like telling me like don't worry about it like he doesn't mean it you know he's just he goes through his thing and I was like and at this point I hadn't been around Daniel a whole lot like he was always busy the only thing that I knew was that he could be stern about like you know he liked things the way he liked them and he was not afraid of confrontation he was not afraid to call people out but that was the only thing I saw but the way this lady was talking to me girl she, it was like she was giving me warnings and I was like girl you better spill it like you better tell me well anyways girl i go on about my time and i got trained on that software that daniel had mentioned to me before i finally got my training for that it was literally a three day training at the headquarters office girl it was so much so although i had my training girl but I'm not well versed, okay? Like, let me get my toes wet. Why? On the day after I came back from my training, Daniel had like three, four different files on my desk that he wanted me to put into this database and like come up with this whole, whole project. Like each of them are individual projects that I have to put through this database perfectly, might I add, for client meetings that he has coming up. And I was like, girl. And like when he did this, it was in like conjunction with all of the other stuff that I had to do and everything that office managers do is like typically on a schedule when it comes to like ordering supplies and stuff like that for the office so I had like deliveries being made I had like a maintenance request to deal with and then I had like this brand new thing to do right I'm trying to take my training and apply this to real life situations nobody is sitting with me I just have the stack of stuff from this very particular boss of mine and I'm scared. I ain't even gonna lie. So it was very hard and I didn't even know if I could ask questions because I was afraid. So I get through them the best way that I can, okay? And by the end of the day, I get an email from Daniel talking about coming to my office and I was like, oh my God. The software that we had, it was like a shared drive. So whatever I was working on, once I hit save, anybody else that had access to it could have access to it and look at what I was working on, right? So I go inside of his office and he shuts the door and I am so scared, bitch. And I always made it a habit to bring like a notepad to like write down notes because I don't know. So I go in there and he sits down and he was like, what's that? And I was like, oh, you know, just in case I need to do anything. Well, I can email you that. And I was like, uh, it's just like my my note taking he was like okay and it was just like weird stuff like that where I was like why do you care so now I feel weird taking notes so I'm like okay so I sit there y'all he pulls down this damn screen and he has a projector a projector and he has his laptop and he starts opening up the files that I just worked on and it is my first time since being trained I would like to reiterate girl when I tell you this man I could physically feel him holding back because he was like going through and like tabbing through each of the section. There were mistakes. I'm brand new to this, okay? So you didn't see this on the on the intake form? And I was like, uh, well, you know, like there was kind of like whatever I said and he was like, well, it's clearly right there. And then he would correct it and then tab through and and like everything was a huge sigh and then just like literally side eyeing me and being like, and, and whatever and so I am just shrinking more and more into my seat and I'm like oh my god immediately I was like this is not a good fit this is not a good fit you need to start sending your resumes out again girl because you are going to get fired we get through all of the mess ups and the errors 
that I had in each of those presentations. And he finally, girl, he gets through maybe like three out of four of them. And he like doesn't even look at the last one. And he goes, do you understand what it is that we do here? I mean, yeah, I understand what we do here. How well do you understand what we do here? So I give him my spiel and I knew exactly what we did here. That wasn't the issue, but he was being condescending and this conversation was taking a very wrong turn, okay? And I can only handle so much. So I bite my tongue and I'm answering these condescending questions. And as I answer them to the best of my ability, this man is becoming full of rage. Like he is getting so irritated. What do you plan on doing moving forward to ensure that this doesn't happen again? I cannot continue to proofread through all of your work. Like at that point, what use are you? And I was like, whoa, at that point, girl, hold up now. It's impossible to ask me to bite my tongue throughout the entirety of this conversation. This man is going too far. So at this point, he starts seeing a peak, just a little peak of who Nikki really is because I spoke up and I said, now, wait a minute. I don't think that that's quite fair of you to say to me considering the fact that I just finished my three-day training at headquarters with this software this is the first time that I'm ever touching this software outside of being taught and being walked through a client file just it's going to take some time it's a bit of a learning curve I could see if this has been happening for two three weeks after my initial training but it's not I just got back I would hardly say that it's a lack of understanding it is just me trying to learn the software and getting acclimated to it so that I can do the best job that I can and quite frankly, this is very much out of my job description of what you told me very directly to stay within the confines of. So I'm not too sure what's happening here and why I am being ridiculed this way for trying my very best with these files having just come out of training. I mean, isn't that what training is for so that you can know what you're doing? And I was like, well, there's kind of a difference between in-class training and field training, isn't there? Like, let's be real. You're gonna tell me that what you learn in a classroom is the same as you doing it yourself? Like, of course not. There's going to be, that's why a learning curve is a term that is used. Like it's just a little curve. It's just a little, pew. okay, so give me a second. He retracted a bit and I don't know if it was just like me biting back at him, but he was like, okay, I would appreciate it if you would ask questions, if you have them. And I was like, and when I do, I will make note of it and bring it to you right away. Like, I am not going to continue to be spoken to this way. Start. I don't care about your stupid little attitude, okay? Like, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. You just want somebody to come in here fresh out of training and act like I know exactly what to do in every situation? Like, this is a lot. This is a lot of data here. So can you just give me a second? This is why I take notes. It's because I want to learn and evolve as I'm growing in this industry. That's how that works. So, girl, we, the, the whole conversation ended. And he was like, well, if you have any questions, you let me know. And I was like, and Will went back to my... My desk and I just was like trying to reconsider my whole life I was like this may not work and I'm gonna be very embarrassed to call my friend who helped me get this job and tell him this isn't working out I don't know how much time it wasn't that much time but in the morning the HR lady comes back in again and she stops at my desk and she was like hey Nikki how you been and I was like I'm good guess what I'm here for and I was like what and she goes I'm here to hire another assistant I don't know <laughs> this man got so pissy that I could not handle the workload that he was trying to put on me that he called the HR manager and was like, I need you to hire me an assistant that's just mine. So she's telling me, she was like, I'm hiring him like a, a direct assistant just for him. Great, fantastical, wonderful, have not been happier about any other news before. Different women are showing up for their interviews. I had not seen her come in cause like I was at lunch and I don't know, like I just looked at her and first like a split second, I was like, oh, she's gonna get hired. Like, I don't know what it was about her. And sure enough, that lady gets hired and we're gonna name her Rhonda. There was like a whole room that was full of filing cabinets and they clear it all out, you guys. It was a whole thing. The guys in the office had to like drag these filing cabinets like to different places. I had to call a furniture company, get a desk out there, a new chair, and then get IT out here and like get her computer and everything. Rhonda is starting on her first day. Very nice lady, very quiet. Um, I show her to her office and she's gonna be spending like 
like the first week training, right? The training with her seemed to go extremely quickly because I felt like I blinked and Daniel was in and out of her office every chance he got. And he was with like a lot of paperwork and everything. And this lady was working her ass off, you hear me? There was never a point in time that I went in there cause like sometimes we had to work together on stuff. She was like drowning in piles and piles of files. She was like the nicest lady ever, you guys. She had two teenage daughters. She was recently divorced. She was like single mom in it and that was why she was coming back to the workforce. She had been out of the workforce to raise her daughters. And then after the divorce, she had no choice but to come back to work to make sure that she had enough, you know, to provide for her daughters and also make sure that she had enough for her retirement. It was like a whole thing. And so she told me that like making this decision was like out of nowhere. It was a surprise to her. And she's just trying to get back into it. Like she had gone so many years without work. And so, you know, when she told me that, I did my very best to help her with like little things here and there that would kind of make her life a little easier. She became like my office mom. She would bring like cookies in for me and like, I don't know, she's just very sweet, very thoughtful. And so I would like make her coffee, bring her coffee to her. Um, when like we would have bagels and stuff in the office, she was so busy that she couldn't even step away. So I would bring her her bagels. Sometimes I would go in her office and just eat my lunch in silence. Like she was just a really comforting person. Needless to say, Rhonda became my friend and I really, really cared about her. So when the day came around that I heard Daniel go into her office, cause it was like right around the corner from my desk where I was sitting. And when I tell you that door slammed so fucking hard and it was like towards the end of the day. And I just remember like it made me jump and I was like, oh my God. And I hear this man I had never heard this before. It's giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. No, no, stop, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. I'm talking now because the problem is, is that when I speak, you don't listen. And now we're gonna be stuck here until late in the evening trying to fix up everything that you've screwed up. In here, stuff slamming on the desk. Before I know it, I'm getting up and running over to the door and I just bust open the door. And he is like, he's standing on the side of her desk. She had like a pretty long desk. And he's like, literally he has the papers in front of him and he's going like this. Oh, I'm sitting here saying the thing, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he has it. And he's like, just slamming the papers and the folders on her desk over and over and over. He is having a whole last meltdown. Looks at me, y'all, he looks at me. And he's like, what do you need? Daniel. Everybody can hear you out here. I lied my ass off and I was like, I am on a phone call with a client right now who's asking about their payment. I'm just concerned, is everything okay in here? And I look at Rhonda y'all and her face is so red and she, I could, this woman's blood pressure was through the roof. I already know it. He's looking at me with these fierce eyes and I'm looking at him and I'm matching it because like, what are you doing? Act with some professionalism. Like this is an office. What is wrong with you? But of course I can't say all that. So I say it all with my eyes and I'm like, I apologize. Rhonda, we'll discuss this later. We need to redo this. And like he starts talking lower. So I step out and I crack the door. I don't even shut it. I crack it. And I go back to my desk and I just like pick up the phone and hold it to my ear. Girl, I am dedicated, okay? And I hold it to my ear and I wait. He comes out and he looks around the corner and I'm like, Yes, sir. Yes, I know. Thank you so much for sending that over. Um, yes, yeah, so I have confirmed that I have received the form and da da da. And he just like takes off, goes down to his office, shuts the door. I just hang up the phone and I'm like, Rhonda is crying. She is like, so stressed out, I bring her water and I'm like, hey, like what's going on? Y'all, long story short, it was the same type of deal with like what I was going through because it was so in depth, these projects and like the, the data analysis that we needed to do, everything had to be perfect. I'm talking about down to the decimal. So I stayed late that night. I stayed, we stayed until like almost eight o'clock. We went through each one of those files and we cross-checked and we, you know, made sure that we were seeing the same thing and we got everything and Daniel came by and I don't know if he was gonna say anything else to Rondo, but he looked at me and he sees me in that office and he was like, Nikki, you're here late. Yeah, I'm waiting for the bus. And at the time I was riding the bus to and from, you know, I'm giving him attitude and he was like, oh, okay, well, I'll see you guys later. And he takes off and I walk out with Rhonda and she dropped me off at the 
the bus stop and I just felt so bad and you know this was the point that we kind of got pretty close and she was telling me about her personal situation and it just made me feel bad because it felt and she felt like her hands were tied like she knew that this was a high stress environment and like this she should not be talked to like that by her superior and her boss for any reason um but she felt like she couldn't go anywhere because she had obligations and responsibilities with her kid this was the point in time that i started kind of feeling in my head that like i was going to have a problem working for somebody like this. One day, just randomly, this beautiful lady comes into the office, okay? And she's like a taller lady, she's gorgeous. I mean, she had like this long skirt and like a blouse on. She looked very put together. And girl, you could tell she had Monty, you hear me? Hi, Nikki, is it? And I was like, yeah, and I'd never met this woman a day in my life. And I was like, Hi, can I help you? And she goes, yes, that Mrs. So-and-so. She was like, Daniel's wife and I'm looking at her and I'm like no fucking way and immediately I just felt bad for this lady how are you liking it she was like how's Daniel been treating you and I was like looking at this lady like girl you this is your husband like I, if he's anything at home like he is here you know you know but like she was such a pleasant person that I was like oh great it's been it's been great it's been wonderful comes around me and she heads towards her husband's office she knocks on the door she goes in, she shuts the door, everything's all good. Fast forward, they end up going to lunch together and he, his whole demeanor is different when his wife is around it seems. Cause like when they passed by, he was like, hi Nikki, how's your day been? Well, you know, you let me know if you have any questions. Like, who are you? Like, what is this? They come back from lunch, she comes back with him surprisingly and they go back into his office for a second. Like I just like forgot about her. She was in there all day, you guys. And so towards the end of the day, I had gone to Rhonda's office for something or maybe just to shoot the shit, I don't know. And we're talking and all of a sudden we just start hearing loud voices, just loud, like somebody's arguing. You hear that? And Rhonda was like, yeah. And girl, when I tell you these two are arguing, but it's mostly Daniel, the way that this man, I like, it pains me to even like repeat the stuff that was coming out of his mouth, but it was very, conde he had this thing about being condescending, questioning a person's intelligence. And from this point, from this perspective, and at this point, I had only seen him do this to women to this extent. How many times do I have to tell you? I can't trust you to do anything right. This was very simple. Why does everything have to be so complicated? All I do is go behind you and just fix all the shit that you fuck up and girl. And all we can hear her saying is, Daniel, stop. It's not that big of a deal. We'll just go somewhere else. And he's like, I didn't want to go somewhere else. That's the point. I wanted to go fucking here. It was towards the end of the day. And I, it was kind of, it was like maybe like 15 or 20 minutes before we were going to be off work and I looked at Rhonda and I was like I can't do this I can't do this it just set me off and there are reasons behind that in my past that I'm not going to get into but I don't react well to that and I have like a fight or flight shit that happens and I can't get in between this husband and wife shit and like honestly I'm just tired of hearing this tone in his voice and it makes me very nervous and very uncomfortable so I got up and I got my shit and I left and I stood at that bus stop seething and I get text messages from Rhonda because you know we had each other's number and she was like they're leaving right now girl I can see into our parking lot from my bus stop that I'm standing at and they are fighting in the parking lot y'all like yelling and he is just when I tell you screaming screaming and she was like I'm done I'm just I'm so I'm not gonna have this conversation with you while you're like this and she gets into her car and she drives off and she literally drives past me and she's crying y'all she is sobbing in her car he gets into his car he takes off in a huff and puff and i'm just sitting there like i can't do this i cannot do this anymore next day comes around and i talk to rhonda i find out that rhonda went ahead and emailed like our hr director and told her hey this is what's going on now it's escalated you know he has yelled at people he's yelled at me and like it's becoming very volatile in the office and then you know she told the hr director about what happened with his wife and like that they were fighting if what I get in the office is even a fraction of what that woman lives with every single day like I feel for her and I'm gonna pray for her because I can't I can't and she her ex-husband was an abusive man and so um she was like girl her eyes just welded up with tears 
and it just made me even more upset. And I looked at her, y'all, and it was the first time that I had ever told any of my coworkers ever in the history of time, you need to quit. You need to go. I felt that way very strongly because Rhonda had just come out of an abusive relationship. And for her to just come out of that and try to put herself back together and provide for her kids as a single mother at over 50 years old, she's supposed to be getting ready for retirement. Like, what you mean? We start talking about quitting. And she was like, of course, you know, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need this job. I need the benefits. And I warned her. I was like, if this happens again, I don't think I can handle it. I'm gonna leave. Uh, let, let's just see, let's just see what, you know, she says, she's talking about the HR manager. And she was like, let's just see what she says. And maybe she has an idea. And girl, I knew based on the conversation that that HR lady had with me before I knew. And sure enough, oh, she gives her the same fucking spiel. She comes to our office, meets with me and Rhonda in Rhonda's office with the door closed. And she was like, okay, tell me what happened. So we tell her everything and she's gonna hit us both with the same thing. You know, he means well, you know, he has been through a lot and his PTSD can just be a lot. And like, I understand that, I get that, but that does not give anybody the right to be a complete asshole and to be a terror in the workplace. And that doesn't mean that Rhonda and I need to be his verbal punching bags and just put up with this unprofessional behavior. What are you talking about? She's looking at me like, Nikki, like, it, you know, we're gonna figure this out. And I was like, we're not gonna figure it out. I was like, you're not here when he's yelling at Rhonda and when he's yelling at his wife and when he's yelling at my coworkers, I was like, he tried it with me and I had to put down a boundary. And I'm telling you, like, I don't do well in those situations. So if, if there's not gonna be any type of remedy for this situation or rectification, I would like to put in my two weeks. Rhonda, she like looks at me and she like grabs me. She's like, Nikki, no, 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 we can figure this out. You know, it's not every day, it's not all the time. And I was like, it's frequent enough. You know, so like we're on opposite sides and she's so nice. And I was like, no, Rhonda. I was like, don't try to sugarcoat it. Like it is, it is bad. I was like, and I can't, I can't work in these conditions. Listen, okay, we're gonna have a meeting about it. Let me talk to Stuart. Stuart was the other exec. Um, let me talk to Stuart and, you know, see if, you know, we can try to find a better way for you guys to communicate. And I was like, Okay, I updated my resume there at work, I did. And I put my resume out there and I started applying to other jobs. I don't know what happened if she went to go talk to Stuart and Stuart talked to Daniel, but things were very calm. And then it got to its worst. There was a grocery delivery, all of the coffee and the creamer and stuff like that delivered for the break room. The delivery guy comes in with a crate full of our groceries and I'm on the phone and he's like looking at me, you know, for direction. I was like, corner, it's right there. And he was like, okay. So he goes around there he sets down the groceries on the counter. He comes out with the empty crate. He waves by, I wave by, and I finish my conversation with this person on the phone. And you know, I'm doing my own thing. And meanwhile, I'm not paying attention to anything else in my surroundings. I'm helping this man on the phone. And all of a sudden I hear commotion and things being thrown around in the kitchen. And I'm talking about bad. Okay, great. Like you'll receive a confirmation email from us in just a few hours. Thank you so much for calling. If you have any questions, you let me know and you call me. Okay, thanks. Bye. And like, I get off the phone and I'm like, what is going on? You guys, I get up and I round that corner into the break room. And there are other coworkers of mine that are coming down the hall and they're like, what the fuck? And we all look in there and Daniel is in that kitchen and he is just throwing shit around you hear me there is coffee creamer all over the floor because he like just completely like just beamed it at the fucking floor and it busted everywhere and i was like <gasps> and he was like oh, i said you guys he is losing it he is losing it there is no other way to put it i want a clean work environment nothing needs to be on the counters why is it that every time i come in here there's papers and all kinds of food all over the counters and i said blah blah you guys I am sitting there and I'm like, oh my God. And I start backing away. And like, there's like two or three of my other coworkers that are right here and they're like, hey, Daniel. And he's not listening to anybody. He is just continuing. He throws sugar packets everywhere. There's papers, anything he could get his hands on. He's just fucking flailing it around. And I am like, oh my God, I start backing up. And here comes Stuart and he is running down the hallway and he like gets in between all of us and goes into the kitchen and he's like looking down. He literally steps into that creamer. He almost busts his ass and he's like, hey, Daniel, Daniel, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. And like, y'all, they are screaming at each other. They are fighting. Stuart's trying to calm him down and like get him out of the kitchen. Absolutely not. I open up my Word document while all of this is happening. Bet, I'm telling you for real, 
hurry. It maybe was like four sentences long altogether. Essentially, I quit. I cannot work in this type of hostile environment. So I have like a little personal printer that's like right under my desk. I print that thing out. I put it in, in an envelope. I take my badge. I put it in there. I address it. I leave it on my keyboard. I take my stuff and I haul ass out of that office. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what was said. Rhonda came out of her office just like all pale. And I was like, mm, mm, mm. and I gave her that look like I got to go and I grabbed my stuff and I left that office never to return. That was way too much, absolutely too much. And you know what, if you are unable to work amongst others because of like personal things that you're going through, that's fine. But like, I just don't agree with, you know, hey, I have PTSD. So if I go off on you and like completely verbally abuse you, you need to be fine with it because I got PTSD. Like absolutely not, homie. You need to go and handle your shit so that you can be a functioning member of society. And however that looks, it needs to be with respect of others that point to the blank to the period because I'm not absolutely not if you think that I'm gonna stick around and clean all that no absolutely no the next day my phone is ringing and it's Daniel <laughs> and I did not answer I ended up talking to Stuart about it he like emailed me and was like hey like I'm just trying to like call you like I respect your decision or whatever so I called him and he was like hey you could tell that I was on speakerphone number one like they are not slick so I knew that Daniel was in the room when Stuart was talking to me. I appreciate the opportunity to work with you and the opportunity that was extended to me. However, I just don't believe it's a good fit. I cannot be in that type of work environment. It is just not conducive to me being able to do my job well and effectively. And so I just feel that it's time for me to move on. And he tries to talk me into giving my two weeks. And I was like, no, I can't do that. What if I let you know that like Daniel will be in the office very infrequently? not good enough. He was like, well, you know, we're gonna have to have some time to like train somebody else. And I was like, and I understand all of that. But you know, Rhonda and I had brought it to HR's attention, who then brought it to your attention, Stuart, and nothing was done. So I just have very little faith in what you're telling me. And with all due respect, I'm just not willing to stick around and find out. So again, thank you so much for the opportunity. I wish you guys the best of luck in replacing my position. It was a pleasure to work with you, Stuart. I wish you guys the best of luck. Peace out. I got my last check in the mail. It's the responsibility of every single person on your team to maintain a level of professionalism. Where is the line? Because that line can get blurred really fast. And I just don't believe anybody should have to undergo that type of treatment when they go to their place of work. The town hero really wasn't a hero. He was really mean. He was really mean. He was awful to his employees. The way that he talked to us and the way he talked to his wife was crazy and I could no longer be a part of it. And Rhonda, if you ever see this girl, I love you. Thank you for always being there for me and guiding me. And like, she, you were always so sweet to me and nice to me. You were absolutely the light of the entire situation. And I just hope everything worked out for her and that she is living a beautiful retirement with her daughters and hopefully her grandkids at this point in time. But but yeah, that is my story about my hero famous boss and how that worked out. I love you, but God loves you more. And I will see your fine self in my next video. Peace out, y'all.